In this episode of Table Talks, I sit down with Hunter Orcutt, who is an event specialist based in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. I can't wait for you to hear her incredible story, how she started her own business, and also God's faithfulness in her life through every season. Also, hear how her marriage was beautifully restored and how God brought everything together in ways she could never imagine. This is a great episode. I can't wait for you to hear it. So, hey, Hunter, I'm so glad to have you with me today. We have Hunter Orcutt. Honestly, I was reading your bio. I Googled you because I've known you for about 10 (laughs) years, but I Googled to see what they said. But truly, you are one of the most sought after event planners in the DFW area and actually in the the whole, I mean, you're, what you do has spread all over the country. So, I mean, you are really, really good at what you do. And I love looking I just follow you and kind of stalk on your event Instagram page and just go through and kind of sigh and think, I want her. I've already asked her if she'd do my 60th birthday, but anyway, we'll see. But I'm so glad to have you today. And like I just mentioned, we met, um, I I think 10 or maybe right around 10 years ago. Yeah. You guys were in Albuquerque doing a ministry event and right away someone said, okay, you're going to love her. And I didn't can understand why. I mean, I, I do love you, but why <laughs> mutual, huge love in her life. I mean, probably at the top under Jesus. Um, yeah. We both love Alabama football. Roll time. Yeah. And Roll time. We, mm-hmm. we just, it's crazy. And um, I don't, why do you like, I don't, I'm from Alabama originally. And I can't remember why you became an Alabama fan. So yeah. Fan. So my mom, I was born in Tuscaloosa, right across the street from the stadium. And so um, I, it, it runs deep in my heart. My mom is a huge Bama fan. And so I grew up in Arkansas, but you could not get me over to the Woo Pig side. It is Alabama through and through. And you can't do it. At least I'm in New Mexico and we're not, University of New Mexico is not in the SEC. So I mean, mm-hmm. I can shoot for them some, but I'm an SEC girl and Alabama, it's our favorite time of the year because it's a football season, but we, this is really cool. So, um, Hunter was just at, um, our flourish conference just um, a few weeks ago here in Albuquerque. And we had already planned to be together and do this podcast, but I got to see firsthand, um, her give this story and talk about her life, um, before, before this podcast. So I'm really honestly so excited to have you and you're so busy and I'm thankful that you took the time out to be with me today. So we're going to talk about a lot of things, but uh, basically your, your last year, few years of your life, but I mentioned you're an event planner, you're a mama, you're of one beautiful little girl and you have a a husband named Alan and um, lots of family and you're Mm -hmm. a very close knit family, your extended family, your sister, you know, you just have so many people um, in your life yeah. that you're close to, and you're just a, a, you can tell your heart's so big. So yeah. if we don't care, if we can just get started. Um, yeah. I just love, you know, hearing you talk about where you were born and where you moved. And so give us just yeah. a bit of history about um, like how you were raised. Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, um, I grew I grew up in Arkansas and my parents are ministers. And so I grew up in a Christian home. Um, and I would say um, my dad's an evangelist. And so that just old school, you know, church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and even Wednesday. So it it was a really unique way to grow up. I'm very thankful for my my roots um, in our faith. But I grew up in Arkansas. I grew up um, as a cheerleader and we loved football. And then I moved to Dallas for college. I went to Southwestern University. I got my elementary ed degree and I met my husband at college. But I always have to say I met Alan Um, before I even moved to Dallas, because all of my siblings knew him. And so they were serving at a local church in Dallas, and they knew Alan as their little youth student. And so um, we had been in contact before I moved to Dallas. And the day I moved to Dallas, he took me on our first date. And so I, I always just associate Dallas to I know the love for the city, but also my love for Alan, because the day I moved here, I fell in love. So 
And that's kind of another thing we have in common. Not, I didn't fall in love with Alan, but <laughs> I met my husband, Galen, same mm-hmm. university, many, uh-huh. many years before that. So in 1980, 1980 is when mm-hmm. I met the same university in the cafeteria. And yeah. you know, someone said, I want you to meet somebody. And that kind of started, we didn't start dating right then, but it's crazy how that place yeah. it brings people together. They really do. It's a great, a great place in it. We actually live in the same town that's out there. We live in Waxahachie. And so moving back here, my husband grew up here. We moved away for a few years. When we moved back, we were like, we just special to us. It's very special. So we love Waxahachie. And so Mm -hmm. Alan went there to school um, to like do studies in theology and church and all that because he wanted to be uh, in ministry. Yes, he, um, his degree is, I mean, I should know this, right? But it is, um, I think pastoral ministries is what it is. Um, So yeah, he thought he was going to be a pastor and he was for a few years. Um, And so that is part of our journey, how we ended up here. And you guys went from Texas. What was your first job in Oklahoma? It was, yeah. So we um, met obviously in Texas and then we got engaged and married and then he moved actually two weeks before we got married to Oklahoma into our apartment and then started his job, came back, got married, and we started a new life in Oklahoma. We didn't have friends. We didn't have family, um, knew really no one. And so that was really unique for us because we were always so close knit to both sides of our family. And it was almost like we had all moved to Dallas, my family from Arkansas, and, and then I ended up leaving. And so um, we we kind of started our first year of marriage alone by ourselves. And then from there, we moved to um, Tulsa. That was in Oklahoma City. And then we moved over to Tulsa. And we were in Tulsa for three years um, as associate youth pastors there, and then found our way back to Dallas. So when you guys, um, we're going to just get to the, because every, this is, you know, everyone has a story. You know, you Mm -hmm. look at people and I know you feel the same way. You scroll through people's social media and it looks like it, everything is perfect about their life. And you spend 10 minutes with someone and quickly find out that yeah. all of us have been on a journey through something. Um, mm-hmm. One way or another, there's no one's life that gets from you know one part of your life to the middle or the end of your life. And you haven't gone through hills and, and valleys and mountaintops and the lowest of lows. And it sounded like you were, um, you know, then, I'm not sure what year that was, you've, you've told me, but was it like... Um, so it was about 10 years ago. How long have y'all been yeah, married? Yeah, it was, um, we've been married right over 10 years. And that was, oh gosh, seven years ago. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, things just rolling. I mean, this great yeah. position you were working for, um, you said associate youth pastor, but you had great ministry friends at that church mm-hmm. that your yeah. mentors were just there. You had support. And then, um, I mean, there. I, I'm I believe this is true. There wasn't like one specific thing that happened in your life. Start um, this downward kind of spiral for your marriage and ministry and all that. And we're going to cut this. We, um, if people haven't watched the the commercial for this, they may not know that. I mean, you, you and Alan's marriage went through a really rough time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alan uh, started dabbling in alcohol and, you know, addicted. So can we just cut there real quick? And because there's so me to the story. It's such a hopeful story. So don't yeah. pick this off if you think this is a sad <laughs> tale because it's it's really there is some sadness and there's a yeah. there's enough things you had to go through, but it's a great story of redemption and God's yeah. in our life. So so stay with us because I want them to to hear all you have to say. So I think my biggest question was did you notice now that you look back? Could you mm-hmm. see little things off with him? Did you notice anything at first? I mean, what was happening? Yeah, I think that it was such a slow process that there was not necessarily one thing that made me feel off or question it. Um, I will say to give a little bit more context, we were both 21. We were both at churches, um, but we would have um, a drink of glass of wine or margarita here and there. It wasn't really anything that we had in our home um, often. And then um, just over time, it became 
you know, two days a week or three days a week or multiple a night. And it was for both of us. And then I think what really triggered everything was when I got pregnant. And so that's always kind of the the before and after for me because I stopped drinking and realized, oh, whoa, like he's drinking a lot. He's doing that a lot. He's um, just, it felt this really unique like off. I don't know how to explain it. I was very off on it. And so I then started this process of like, okay, like let's not drink tonight. I don't feel good. Why do you have to do that? Um, maybe only do that on Tuesdays for Taco Tuesday night, you know, things like that. And then as my pregnancy began um, to go further along, I started having to like mark alcohol bottles. How much are you drinking? Um, and so by the time I had my daughter, our daughter, it was something that had escalated. So that was about nine months of, whoa, this is something that I had no idea I was I was about to get into at all. Um, I think I've, I stated it at the conference, you know, my biological dad is or was an alcoholic and my mom was kind of faced with with a choice when I was, you know, a baby of either you're going to be married to an alcoholic or um, you're going to have to walk away and, you know, lose your marriage. And that was a decision that had to be made. And so I am fully aware of addiction and how it can traumatize and really destroy lives. And so I'll say that I never thought I would be in that situation because I did the opposite. I went to Bible college. I married a pastor. I was doing all of these things that, oh, I'm going to do the complete, and here I am, 23 pregnant, literally in the same situation. And so um, it, I started having conversations with people that were really close to us, um, specifically um, a couple that was actually our oversight. And so we talked to them and they kind of gave Alan ultimatums as well of like, if you don't get this under control, I'll, I'll fire you and go work at Home Depot. You know, and I'm thinking, oh, he'll never get fired from ministry. Like that's no way. Um, and we came to this crossroad right after I had my daughter and we ended up moving back to Dallas. So there was a lot of changing in the upper staff. And so we ended up coming back and we moved in with my parents. And I thought, oh, he'll definitely stop drinking, you know, in my parents' house. I have and a question. So, yeah. Um, just real quick. I'm thinking yes. how quickly, because I know what, I mean, you said that was like over a period of, you know, months and months where you're pregnant yeah. with your daughter. You know, the first thing you said, you you might not have noticed had you not gotten pregnant, decided mm -hmm. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to stop. And then that opens your eyes because, you know, you kind of would think, um, that I know you were very intentional. I'm not going to, so I'm going to do everything opposite because right. that's what my mom, not that you used to be very close to your mom, but you, right. she was probably saying to you, watch for this and marry a Christian mm -hmm. and, and all. And so you checked all the boxes and Alan loved the Lord. He grew right. up in a great home. It's not that you went off to college and, you know, looked for the, the wild guy. He, you right. loving Jesus and serving God and doing all the right things. But it's, it's truly, what happens to all of us, it can happen at any given time. We get mm -hmm. on a slippery slope and the person that's on the slope never knows they're on the slope. Mm -hmm. right? They never know they're yeah. on the slope. And your people around you are trying to say, hey, I think you're going to slide right off. But um, we always think we can fix it, right? Or the, the right. person going through it, my assumption would be, and I, I got to see Alan when he was here with you um, yeah. last month, but he would say, he has said and would say the same thing. He didn't want to hear, and he thought he could. Con he thought he had the mm -hmm. everything inside of him to control it himself. That he could do right. whatever he wanted to do. I'm assuming. Um, yeah. So you can go back to Dallas. You just said he's. I mean, I'm. He obviously couldn't do what he needed to do in Oklahoma, and yeah. I think you had said he tried. Like I, I would, mm -hmm. if you can go through that, and maybe that's part of the yeah. Dallas part. But the you know several times to try to yeah. drinking. Yeah. And that is definitely more Dallas um, because I never told him to stop drinking before we moved to Dallas. I just said like, can you just chill out? Like what's happening? You know? Yeah. Like, okay. Um, but when we moved to Dallas and I, I did ask, can you please stop drinking? Like, I don't think it's 
the right fit for you. Um, you're not the same person. There were a lot of things within that, um, that I was like, okay, you have, like, you have a problem and you have to stop drinking. So that is when a lot of the stop drinking, start drinking, all of that cycle. And so when we moved back, we moved in with the parents, Mitchell was three months old and she, I, she was the cutest little thing ever. Like I was like, I just so cute, you know, my parents were there to help. And, you know, I just thought, okay, we're going to start fresh in our favorite city with family again. And so, um, I had come home about two weeks after we moved in and, Alan was drunk, passed out at my parents' house. And I was like, are we, are we seriously doing this? Is this happening? And so he was like, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to, I'm so sorry. And then a week, like a week went by and he was drinking again and passed out drunk. And uh, it, I just to the point where I was like, I'm calling your parents. And I had never told his parents anything. And he was definitely the golden boy. And he was the the smartest kid you know got his college paid for because of scholarships like Alan was perfection in most people's eyes and so to call his parents and say hey by the way this has been going on it was a hard shock for them and as a parent now I can totally see how shocking that would be but I made them uh, drive across town and pick him up and take him I was like I'm not doing this I'm not doing this and so I I got a I gave a lot of grace, but I had a backbone pretty early on of like, we just need to get to the root of this and I will love you through it and I will be with you, but I'm not going to live in this chaos. And so again, I thought, sure, his parents are packing up, his parents know now they're going to talk to him and we're going to be good. And so about a week went by, we we were separated for about a week and um, he sat down, he called let yeah. me, mm-hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt. Let me ask you about yeah. that you know, because I can imagine that tension between, okay, I need to have him here because mm-hmm. we have a baby, but that same, I need to have, he can't be here because we have a baby and he's passed out drunk in yeah. front of my baby and your, you know, everybody else. And, but that kind of tension when you love someone, that's a lot of hard, you know, love you had to yeah. do the way. Cause I, most people, I mean, you are a strong woman, but I feel like it had to be the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And it was all that God was just building you strong in your faith to know you have to do this because that's not natural in human yeah. strength, what you did. Like that doesn't come that easy for someone because right. you, yeah, the person you chose to marry and mm-hmm. you're breaking inside mm-hmm. to say, yeah. but you didn't want to see happen to you what had happened to your mom. Right. No, exactly. And I'll say um, that that first time when his parents took him, I just thought, oh, this is going to be like a good just like wake up shock and that's it. And so I had no idea that we were starting the journey we were starting. So I would say God gave me just enough strength for that and continued to give me the strength um, because At the beginning, I had no idea what was going to unfold. And had I known that, I mean, I would have been crumbled in my bed with tears and just been like, forget it. I'll just let him be an alcoholic. You know what I mean? And so um, God truly guided me and walked with me daily and gave me the right amount of grace and strength throughout each and every day. And that just foundation continued to build to know that like, I am fighting for my marriage. I am fighting for my daughter's dad. I am fighting for Alan and his life and his future. And um, I think I was just truly immersed in that. And that is what part of what got me to, to where we are today. But um, I will say that, when he came back, I really did think he was done drinking after that week. Um, he apologized to my family, my parents setting him down. Um, and so about two weeks, and Alan's cycle was about two weeks of sobriety. And so um, he would be on the cycle of, we're good. I'm so sorry. I won't drink again. And two weeks would go by and he almost kind of get settled in again. And he had start drinking again. And there was there were so many ways I knew from the speech to the non-responsive to text messages to seeing it in his eyes, his body language. Um, and it would just like crush me, you know, of like, are you are you seriously doing this again? From the respect 
to like the love, to like the selfishness. It was like, are you really? And so after that, after that, I kicked him out again. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. Like, it's not beneficial for anyone. And I was like, you need to go live with your parents. And so that started separation. And our separation was for 15 months. And so I could pause there and be like, there was a lot that happened and we're back together. But I think it's important for people to see how um, it escalated and just ways to deal with someone with addiction. And I know that everyone's walk is different in addiction and different types of addiction. Definitely um, like there are just so many ways to handle it. And so although it worked for me, it might not work for other people. And I'm fully aware that people's marriage or relationship with their sibling might not turn out like mine. Um, I think I had given the statistic 97% of alcoholics relapse within the first year. And it's what they do with that year after of relapsing, what are they going to do with it? And I think it's like 80% of alcoholics, you know, end up staying an alcoholic. And so there's a small margin of um, people that actually get sober. And so I don't ever want to give false hope to people because I never want 10 years down the road, someone to be in the same abusive, um, toxic relationship But I also know that this is hope for people that if you do set the right boundaries and you do have clear communication, that that is going to give you a fighting chance to have an incredible marriage or relationship with someone that you love. So did someone, I mean, did did those boundaries just come to you? Like, were you seeing a therapist? Did your family help you? I mean, you, you set them clearly once you got to the place where you realized there's a cycle now. Yeah, this is his pattern. So how how did you decide what worked for you? Because there may be people that they're like, like you said, that that doesn't work for them. But some way you have to come up with what's the plan? Yeah, I um, yeah, I think a plan's great. So once I kicked out Alan and it was like, you're we're not going to live together until you're sober and sober on my terms, which a lot of addicts do not like that and um, the boundaries or the ultimatums and that is kind of a telltale if you start putting those ultimatums on people they maybe you think are an addict or maybe they're not you're not for sure if you start saying no to this or you have to do this and they start going in the complete opposite way that can give you kind of a clear sign of someone struggling with something but i did see a christian counselor which i highly recommend whether you're going through trauma or not or you've had past trauma or not to just talk to someone that can give you guidance of just daily. I talk to my counselor now and I'm like, my house is a wreck. What do I do? She's like, turn on your worship and start praying while you're cleaning. That'll change your mindset, you know? So um, I just think it's good for anyone and everyone. And there are certain ways for people to um, go through counseling if, if finances, you know, from a church or their, you know, price reduction. So I think there is ways for almost anyone to get in with a Christian counselor, but that was a big thing for me. I will say I leaned heavily on my family because we are in ministry, but also my mom specifically had walked through this. And so I really leaned on them. Um, And I am aware people don't have family for that. And so um, I leaned on a lot of friends that had dealt with this with family members. But after kicking him out, I just thought, I just never knew what was going to happen. Like, I just truly was like, it's Alan. Like, what is he doing? It's going to be like, he never had like a wild streak. So I'm like, great, I'm living that out with him. Awesome, cool, you know? Um, But I just did not think it was going to be what it was. And one of the first things that happened that escalated was he got a DUI and he was arrested and booked. And when I got the call from his dad, I was like, what, what, what do you tell? Like he was drinking and driving. And then on top of it, he had a mom with like three or four kids in the car and he crossed five lanes of traffic trying to turn. And I just think about that day and even as hard as it was, how God was protecting us because it could have gone 
so many different ways. You know, I get very emotional talking about that. So um, that I thought was going to be it. I was like, oh, he's definitely going to get sober now. I thought that was his rock bottom. It wasn't. And I'll pause there. Do you have questions as I'm talking? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I'm just, I can picture this. I'm reliving it, you know, yeah. with you and, and just th this, this, there are some things you do as a person, mistakes you make that have life altering consequences mm -hmm. that, that you wouldn't be sitting here today talking to me about this story had that, that driving under the influence gone e any other right. way. You wouldn't have been right. able to ending. And yeah. that's, that's just, uh, I know, you know, because that's what you, you know, do, but God's grace. And I, yeah. so you're at this part of your life where, I mean, you're, you had to be thinking, how are you going to survive as a single mom while you're separated from him? Mm -hmm. So he's all, he's living with his parents and he's still not. So we'll, we'll go back to that in a minute, but you yeah. had to, I mean, you had to live and right. figure out, I'll just start this event planning business or is that how did it start yeah that is I started I nannied through college so it was like I had almost gone like backwards gotten married had a kid but then turned right back around and I'm back in Dallas nannying again so I was nannying and trying to make ends meet and I just was like to the point if I am going to be a single mom what am I going to do to provide for my child and for me, I just kind of wrote out what I thought I was good at. And I had recently gotten married, obviously, a few years prior. And I've always been good at, like, helping people. I, I thrive in knowing that, like, someone was like, oh, Hunter came to the rescue. I love that. And so um, I love being the helper. I love coming up with a game plan. I love um, also people being happy with something. And so... I was like, I think I could be a wedding planner. I totally think I could do this. Now, I will say, don't go off planning your own wedding to think that you'll end up being a wedding planner because you planning your own wedding, you're designing and planning for yourself and you get to make the final calls. And then when you go over here and plan for someone else, you have to explain and negotiate. And there are a lot of other things, but it worked in my favor. And I started... January of 2018, which we'll kind of, we're going ahead of Alan's story, but I had posted on Facebook and was like, if anyone's getting married, I would love to, you know, plan your wedding for free. I'm interested in this. And two girls reached out, some friends from college, and one was getting married in February and one was getting married in March. And I showed up and did their wedding and it's like, oh, I could really, I could do this. And so by that, summer and that following August, I had a website and I was planning events. A lot of vendors and venues were referring me because they were like, they're the nicest planner we've ever met. Like planners, I guess, I know that they have this bad rap of being mean and being so, and I wasn't like that. It was like, my client is good. I'm good. Everyone's fine. Like we've got it. And so that's how and it's, it is so God to use something that was so broken and I was so broken and I was so devastated and turn that into what it is today because he saw that not only was I going to be a wedding planner and an event planner, but Alan and I were going to do it together. And it's just the goodness of him to say, oh, I'm going to throw you back into the wedding industry or into the wedding industry Put your marriage back together and you guys are going to do that together. And, and like so, I said, you couldn't see that when no. God's so, you know, that's how he does. He gives you a little right. bit of time because if we saw the whole thing, I think we would run the other way. At mm -hmm. first, we're going to go through it all. So you started by yourself as a single mom. Yeah. You started the business just trying to make ends meet and still yeah. all the whole, this beginning of the time, Alan's, is he still living with his parents at that point or? Yeah. So he's living with his parents and after his DUI, I gave him another ultimatum. And I said, you cannot see Mitchell until you go to rehab. And no one stood by me on that. Like everyone thought I was being too harsh. Everyone couldn't believe it. And I just was like, I have to protect my child after that car accident. And so I was like, you have to go to rehab. Like you have to go get help. And so he checked himself in on Thanksgiving morning um, November 22nd, 20, 
let's say that was 2017. And that was actually his 27th birthday. And so we actually were in New York. Me and my entire family went to New York. First time I've been in New York, Mitchell's nine months. And I'm at like the 21st floor of a hotel getting to see my favorite thing, the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, Snoopy, and everyone's coming down. And my husband's checking into rehab. Like, like what's my life? Like, it's supposed to be so incredible. And everyone would dream to be where I'm at right now. And I'm breaking inside because my husband made a horrible decision. And I had to be the bad guy, essentially. But I knew that I had to stay firm. And that's another one that is very emotional for me because it's like his decision truly like ruined so many moments for a season and God's restored that Mm -hmm. 10 times, you know, but it was a season of, of brokenness and frustration and anger because you're choosing to like be selfish and love yourself more than us. And so he went off to rehab and he was there for 30 days. And I always had the philosophy, as long as you're getting sober and getting help, I'm there for you. I will run to the ends of the earth with you. Um, So I picked him up at the airport with his mom in Mitchell. And it was December 22nd. It was almost Christmas. And I was like, we did it. Like, yay, we got this. We're good. And we went to Arkansas, my family like opened their arms and were like, we're so proud of you. And he wanted me to move back in with him at the beginning of the new year. And I just was like, no, you're going to have to prove you're going to have to like unwrite everything wrong you've done. And like a weekend of the first of the year, he started drinking again. And I just was like, I'm done. Like, I'm so done with this because I just feel like my grace had like worn out. Like it just, um, this yo-yo, this back and forth. And so I had already been in contact with a lawyer because I was very concerned about Mitchell and protecting her and like my rights as a mom, um, especially since we are still technically married. And so I had written in and so she had followed up with me at the beginning of January and was like hey following up for your retainer fee and I just felt I need to just pause like I just need to pause and again he's out drinking again so why would I need to pause but I just felt the Holy Spirit tell me if you'll give me till July and I didn't know what that meant I didn't know if it meant I'm divorced by then or if you know something horrible has happened. I didn't know, or is my marriage going to make it? And so um, I emailed the attorney back and I said, Hey, I'm going to pause for a little bit. I'll follow up when I need you. I had no idea what was about to happen. And so um, it was a a few weeks and I get a call. Alan had been working at a bank and I get a call from that morning from his sister that um, he showed up to work at 1030 in the morning drunk. And, um, they were, they were needing him to get off the property. And so thankfully his boss, I mean, I owe a lot to that boss. Um, they called the celebrate recovery pastor at the local church. And I do want to pause there and say like the programs churches have, you will never truly see the fruit of programs like that. And I'm just so thankful for him in that church for investing in that and so you got me good Kay you got me crying today (laughs) you're a beautiful crier so that's good (laughs) thank you um and so he showed up to Alan and his parents and you know kind of talked to him he was drunk but talked him off a cliff and Alan did you know send me some text messages of you know your life would be better without me and then I go into a tailspin. I've never heard that extreme. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, someone go in there with him. What's going on? I'm not there. And um, so his parents essentially tell him, you're either going to go to a local therapy place, like a check-in um, 
or, you know, we're going to call the police and make them take you. So it's like either your decision or not, but you're going regardless. And so he checked himself in. That was January 26, 2018 and checked him in. And he said that night he, he was in the craziest place possible. And there were people like banging their heads up against the wall. And it's like, this all white room and beds everywhere. And he said, God, if this is the way um, and where I end up by me leading my life, I will forever give my life to you and I will honor and obey you. And that's the last day he ever drank. Yeah. And so it, 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 when I talk through it like that, there's so many micro stories in the daily of that I could, oh, I could go into, but and when you see it like that, you're just like, God's hand was on all of us. And we did have to go through every hard thing to get us to that point. And he carried us in that moment, you know? And so Isn't it interesting what God yeah. wanted, what God wanted from Alan was surrender. Mm -hmm. And it took for, for Alan to get to the place that said, I, I surrender all. Yeah. It took all that to get him to that lowest point for him yeah. to basically what he had done as a child I'm sure surrendered his life mm -hmm. to God but then you, he went through a time I mean it truly is a spiritual rebellion however it starts whatever you know caused him to start to you know drink and then over drink and then become dependent on something besides Jesus yeah put him mm -hmm. in a place that he had to get back to where and, and God never had his hand off of him he right. had Hand on him all the time, but but he can't make us do something. That's God gives us that freedom to for yeah. us to choose what we want. And because you would have, you know, you would have said, let's don't do this for two years, go through all this. Right. Rather just do what, you know, the the plan that you thought was plan A, but you're truly still, you're truly living plan A now. Yeah. Because I feel like God has a plan and he keeps us on it. Even if we veer off, we're still on his plan because God. Yeah. Ultimately, he's leading and guiding. So I, that's a whole nother podcast. But I don't think that, <laughs> I don't think when we mess up, we have he digs out of a bag to find plan number four, plan for their life. He still got the one plan, and you're living yeah. it now. So I mean, I'm listening. I feel like you. I'm learning something every you know when I've heard you tell the story once. That's all, and then twice today. But um, the challenges you could talk about challenges all day. We could sit here all day and talking about spiritual yeah. challenges. I am sure that you laid in bed at night saying, God, I mean, you, I know you can fix this. I know you can. Right. What do I do? And why aren't you? And why is this, you know, child Alan, your, your son, why is he going through this? You love him and he's loved you. And I mean, I think that's what all the things I would think I would, the struggles right. and, and you were strong, but you weren't strong. I'm sure when it was time to go to bed at night and you're laying there, yeah. yeah. Baby's crying in the other room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it was, you know, I, I look back on that. I'm like, how did I even do that? Like, how was that, you know, like trying to make ends meet? And again, I'm so thankful for both of our families to help us, you know, they carried us through in so many ways, but still it was so much brokenness, so much anger, so much frustration, you know, within that, that season that I look back and I'm like, I don't wish that on anyone. But I will say, I would go through that over and over again if it gets us here today. You know, like I just, I would because memories fade and, you know, emotions change, but it's what got us here today. And I'm, I, I love Alan so much more today than I ever did. You know, well, obviously so, he came back home. How did you, yes. once he moved back in and you saw that this was a, a he was really, on the path to recovery because every day is recovery once right. you be at it because I've got to I mean I talked to him we know him well and yeah. he shares this same story he was on stage with you at our conference yeah. you know over a thousand women at the end of when you told the story but how quickly how did you learn how to trust again I mean how it, all of a yeah. sudden he didn't go from all that to okay we're, we're all good or did Great. you did God yeah get you where you trust so, him and help us get to the end of the story yeah that was between Jan so January to July the end of January um when he did that I was like bravo you said to God that you weren't going to drink again like 
cool. You know, I kind of had some sarcasm within that, you know, um, and over the next few months, I mean, uh, and I said this at the conference too, is like, how do I not, um, have trust issues? How am I not angry at him? But when you pray for someone to get whole and healthy and you've seen them so broken and you start seeing them do the right thing, all of those emotions, yes, I have to deal with them and unpack them, but they start to just fall off and drift away because everything that you've prayed for is happening. And so over those few months, he was going to celebrate recovery. Um, he didn't, you know, it's funny, he wasn't in a rush to move back in. He said, like, I will give you as much time, whatever you need. Um, we started going to counseling together. Then we slowly started doing like parenting play dates and very, um, again, not what I thought my life would be. But by July, we moved in together. So we stayed separate even after he got sober because I was like, you're going to have to prove to me. And even some people did think July was still too soon to get an apartment and get a lease together. But I knew God had promised me July, regardless of what it was. So for him to get sober and see all of those months, I knew that was God dropping something for me to hold on to in January, early January. And so um, by July, we moved in together. And like I said, by August, I had my you know, my first website as an event planner and um, even small stories, which is, I know we are almost out of time, but you know, the day Alan, cause he got on probation, he'd be on probation for his DUI and he was on probation for two years. But the day in April, he went on probation. He had to go to the courthouse. Um, a friend of his from Silver Recovery called him and offered him a job the same day he was walking to the courthouse for probation. And that's how God works again. And I will just shout it for the rest of my life. You know, he's walking in because he did something so bad. He's now having to pay the consequences. But God gave him something to, to rely on, a corporate job that he worked for years that was so great to us in a season of we ended up getting out of debt. And we had like $45,000 of debt. And just this journey of wow, like, God, you truly had us at all times. And at every moment, you were there to, in the bad news, give us good news. And so um, that's how we got got back together. I love, um, we were sitting at dinner with you guys at Flourish Conference one evening, and, and Alan was sharing. So now he's a part of the company. You guys are together. You know, you're yes. the, you're, you are, you know, obviously you're Hunter or Cut, but he's in this business with you. And I love that he shared, he, you do many, many weddings, but also big corporate events and all these events. But on the wedding side, he officiates yeah. Some yeah. Of the, so a lot of them. He does counseling yeah. for couples. I mean, yeah. it is premarital counseling. So what was the worst thing that could happen to you guys? God mm -hmm. is now using that to help yeah. couples and bless other people. And there, you guys have vision for the, the future. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, you have an amazing um, business. We saw you on our stage speaking and telling this story. And you have such a, you, you are a kind person, which people notice that in your business. But you have such, I can feel a passion for, um, you know, wanting this not to be a wasted time. It, it wasn't wasted because for even you, right. but you don't want to have gone through all that and not have others be able right. to benefit from it or to know that there's people that will, you know, walk with them through a journey. And so God's put you in a place that all your, you know, half of what you do or a third of what you do is working with couples that are about to get right. Married. And right. they, they don't need you then. They know that, you know, Alan's yeah. uh, licensed again, is, you know, just to be a you know minister and officiate. And it's been years behind you now. I mean, that was that right. was 18. He moved back in because mm -hmm. yeah, so, so. you're talking six years, um, sobriety plus. And, yeah. and he's just um, he's such an, a, a kind person. And you can just see him when he looks at you, the amount of love in his eyes, but also the amount yeah. of love in your eyes um, that, that you've weathered, like the worst thing you could imagine that could happen to your marriage, you've, you've weathered that. Right. And as long as you're, you know this, and he does now too, surrender to God, um, that he's, you've got, you know, Jesus walking with you through, because your life is not yeah. perfect, I am totally sure, because yeah. no one is, but it feels like you're living a dream compared to the hell you were walking through. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And it is, and anything would be better than what we were walking through, but the surplus of what God has, has given us. I I mean, I walk around in, in my home and I'm like always overwhelmed by the goodness of God. And even on my worst days, I have to remind myself, I'm like, no, 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 there are a lot of other places you could be right now. You know, um, they 2020, um, my sister sent me and Alan a text and it was this long text about, I really believe this is going to be the year of payback that everything that the enemy tried to take from you, he now has to pay it back. And that year we built our home. We became debt free. We made an event company last through COVID. Um, And so we have a large painting that was in our first home that we built and in the new house that we just bought. Um, It says payback. It's a really pretty art and it's payback. And I walk by that all the time. And I'm like, this is what the enemy tried to take from us. And he couldn't. And like God's given it all back and some. And so when we stand on that daily and that's how our houses ran, you know, Maybe that's the title of a book you guys will write. Uh, maybe. <laughs> because just the title, you saying that payback, God, God is just, that is what he's so, um, God is God and he's amazing. But yeah. his, his um, but you can always tell God's character, his nature is to restore. And I said at the beginning of this, this story is a hope, um, is a story of restoration and hope. And yeah. it, even if people's story doesn't end exactly like yours did or is ending. God, God yeah. still is the, the God of, of restoration and hope. He still has a plan for someone that might be listening to say, that's not how mine worked out. I'm on the other side. And it didn't work out, but that doesn't mean that God still right. is going to pay back what the enemy yeah. did steal or tries to steal. There is a, there is a good ending because God is God, even if it's right. Yeah. And, and that's something I do. I don't know. I touched on a little bit, but I am, I am a product of um, an addict staying in their addiction. And so I will say um, the best thing that ever happened to me though, was, was my mom choosing to get out of a toxic relationship and having an incredible stepdad and siblings in the life that I live. And so I just always want people to be encouraged by regardless of which route their relationship goes, God is going to carry you through that and everything is going to be okay because he is with you. And so I really stand firmly on our story, but also on so many that didn't end up like ours. And the time goes by so fast. And I, right. I just know I've encouraged people to, to follow you too on your, yeah. on your social media, because I get to see yeah. pictures of you and Alan together. I watched this journey, although you didn't, sh- you didn't share everything you guys were going through, but I knew when you were alone, cause I could see it on right. you know, Instagram. It was, I had no idea what the details were at that point, but I could see it on Instagram, but to look at stuff and to see you guys working together and sharing this uh, not ju- this amazing blessed business and your daughter yeah. Mitchell just you know being with you and not only um you know is the family restored but together you guys get to be with her a lot of the time you get to yeah. this wonderful parenting journey and your husband's in it with you you're you're not by yourself and um yeah. it's just this the story's amazing and I can't wait to you know, maybe there'll be a part two on this sometime where yeah. you guys come on together and we can start yeah. here from, you know, I love it forward because, um, and I think, and this, you know, this, this will be on the podcast, but I think I heard yeah. us asking Alan something about coming back and yeah. sharing at our, at our church for, uh, you know, men's conference down the road. And I heard Alan yeah. say, okay, so yes, <laughs> we're going to hold into it. Yeah. Great mama ears. I can hear when I need to. And I'm excited <laughs> to hear, um, you know, him share because he's just an amazing person, a solid, yeah. he always, I don't doubt that he ever, that he never loved Jesus. I doubt, right. I mean, we know that he said, you know, you're not going to direct me, God, I don't want what you have for me right now. Right. And, your your God honored you and your prayers and your um, steadfastness and wow all I can say is wow I um, 
I love the story. And I know people are going to have, you know, may have questions. And honestly, if you're, if someone's listening to this and they, you know, want to ask something, they can, you can message me, they can message me. And, um, you know, if I, I can also, if you live in the Albuquerque area, I can help you. Yeah. If you need uh, a therapist or you need to talk to someone, yeah. I can get you in the right place or to a celebrate recovery or to wherever they need to be. Um, even yeah. if you don't live in Albuquerque, I'll find help for you. I can do that. I have a lot of connections. And I know how to do it. Um, I'm a grandma and a mama, so I know <laughs> done. So um, if you're listening and you, and you either are the person like Hunter that you're walking through it, or you're someone listening with that addiction and you need help, um, we're going to, we'll help you do that. And we'll get you yeah. the right direction. Um, so don't hesitate to private message or whatever you need to do. But Hunter, honestly, I love, um, your story just gives me so much hope and and reminds me of God's faithfulness. Um, yeah. I'm, and I'm just grateful for you. And I'm grateful you. we met each other. Um, I just, I remember where I met you. Exactly. I met <laughs> so you. I'm so glad that I met you. And I'm glad we share um, the love of Jesus and ministry and all things pretty. But we also love Alabama football. So that is just a bond that That's we'll it. never break. And um, <laughs> so the season turns out. But thank you again for joining me today. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today on Table Talks. For more content and information about upcoming episodes, please visit my website at kwoodward.com. You can also explore other podcast links and resources there. Until next time.